All right, Neil, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really looking forward to this conversation all about the metaverse and standards. So you are currently the chair of the Metaverse Standards Forum. Uh, before we get into that, and there's a lot to unpack there, I'd love to hear a little bit about what led you to the organization, uh, your involvement in it, a little bit about your past. Sure. So, uh, yes, uh, hey, hey, everyone, and thanks, Joseph, for inviting me. This is uh, an honor to be here. The um, my my history is is with 3D graphics. I got hooked on 3D graphics even in in college, and I have been involved in bringing 3D onto various platforms. First onto workstations, and then PCs, and then mobile phones, and then the web, and now uh, the metaverse. And uh, as part of that journey, uh, involved but early on with OpenGL, which is kind of the granddaddy of all 3D. Uh, API standards and just got hooked on this, the general idea of things can move faster and better for the whole industry if folks work together. And you know, that's kind of turned into uh, the, the the theme, you know, kind of <laughs> my, my thing. Uh, and um, the OpenGL ended up at the Kronos Group, which is a standards organization uh, that defines many uh, open standard APIs we like to say connecting hardware to silicon, uh, drive, enabling applications to drive GPUs, vision processors, uh, increasingly um, uh, machine learning, inferencing. Um, anytime uh, application wants to get to hardware uh, acceleration, then you know, we try to have Kronos APIs that enable that, uh, enable the industry. Um, Kronos has been going for 20 years. Uh, over over twenty years, um, and it's a, it's a kind of a classic standards organization. Um, we have a lot of the hardware vendors and platform vendors and software vendors there, and it kind of led to the Metaverse Standards Forum because many of the, the standards we do at Kronos uh, and I have been doing for many years uh, are relevant to the Metaverse. There's three D APIs, there's three D asset formats, there's the OpenXR uh, API for augmented and virtual reality. So we found. Uh, a bunch of new companies and organizations coming to the front door at Kronos saying, we, we love your standards, but no, what's, where do we go for the bigger picture? Because the metaverse is bringing together so many different technologies. That's really the, the crux of the interest, I think, is we're bringing together multiple disruptive technologies, not just the 3D and the XR, but also machine learning. And there's going to be some Web3. Uh, in there, and you bring together all, all of these disruptive technologies, something interesting is going to happen. Which, and I think we don't really know what. <laughs> we don't know what that is quite yet. We, we don't. We're getting there. No, we don't. And, and it's going to be this chaotic, chaotic in the mathematical sense, no chaotic uh, Darwinian process by which you know we, people are going to try different combinations. Some's going to work, some's not going to work. Um, but the interoperability is, is key. Um, you know, if we want technologies to work together, you no, know, we need interoperability. And uh, the best way to get pervasive interoperability is to have the right open standards at the right time. You know, we want the metaverse. I think many of us want the metaverse to be open and accessible, just like the web, um, which is based on open standards. And so, you know, we need to evolve the standards uh, platform uh, to uh, bring together the connect connectivity of the web with the immersiveness of spatial computing. I, th um, I think that may, yeah. you're right. I apologize. I think you're absolutely right about that. And I, I definitely want to unpack that. But one thing I want to make sure that we're all on the same page about is when you define the metaverse, I've heard many, I have my own definitions. I've heard many other people have different views of that. What does that look like in your view or the standards uh, form view? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. The, um, we really do take a kind of a pragmatic view. Um, I think asking someone today what the metaverse is going to be in five, 10, 20 years time is like sitting someone down in front of the Netscape browser <laughs> yes. in, in 1982, you know, with a single page of text probably flashing. <laughs> <laughs> flashing text. Yes. yes, if you remember. Oh, um, very well. <laughs> and asking them to imagine Uber and Amazon. And the, the amount of disruption and opportunity that 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 created, I, I honestly think we're you know at, at the beginning of that kind of journey, a multi-decade journey, uh, as we figure out how to bring things uh, together. And you know we, we are going to be entering 
into this Darwinian process. I think that the, the, the thing to grab hold of is saying, okay, we don't know where we're going, but we, we know we're going to need interoperability. And as we build these uh, interoperability um, um, elements, there is going to be this wavefront of commercial opportunity. You know, there are proto metaverses out there in the, in the you know the, the normal examples you know in the consumer space there's things like roblox and uh fortnite in in the enterprise space you now people are deploying digital twins you know nvidia has omniverse you know there, there's all kinds of interesting things happen happening um so great but, point and that's yeah. that's where i am i grapple with a lot in terms of you you talk about the enterprise versus these open organizations that at the forefront of what they're trying to do, there's multiple blockchains. They may have chosen a blockchain or two or whatever the case is, and they're building on that. And they're allowing people to own assets on those various blockchains. Mm -hmm. So when you think about the standards, um, are we talking about standards that work across everything, an interoperability that works across absolutely everything from Roblox over to Sandbox? Um, like, how does that look? How how would that all bake out? So... It's, it's going to be very interesting and you know in in any field of human endeavor <laughs> particularly in the, in the commercial space there's always a spectrum and it's as it should be uh, there's a spectrum of companies there are some companies that build their business model on having um proprietary technologies you know they they want to provide value on their own platform uh you know they, they their business model is not to interact with uh, uh, other uh, ecosystems in the industry and then there's the other end of the spectrum where companies you know see advantage to the networking effect of uh, embracing open standards and you know being able to interoperate uh, break out of their silo uh, and interoperate with the larger uh, uh, ecosystem and get kind of the Metcalf effect, you know, the, the bigger the network, the, the larger the value of, of the network. So the, uh, I think a lot of people believe that the full potential of the metaverse is going to occur if we can enable the people that choose to, uh, and standards can never force anyone to use standards. No, it needs to be voluntary. Um, but I think the role of the standards community is to have the standards in place that the people that want to interoperate and figure out how that works um, uh, are, are enabled to by having the right standards at the right time to enable all kinds of interoperability. And that's kind of another, it, it again, it comes back to the complexity of what we're trying to do. Uh, there are multiple levels and multiple types of interoperability that we need. Um, there's no one standards organization can, that can possibly define all of the different interoperability that we need we need a going to need a constellation of standards from hundreds of um, standards organizations all doing good work and that was really the the, the genesis of the forum uh the standards community began to realize oh we actually need to talk together because this is a much larger problem than any one of us and one of the organizations can solve alone and we discovered there wasn't a venue for the standards community to come together and to interact with the broader industry um, and and that's and that's why uh, we formed uh, the Metaverse Standards Forum. No, it is. It's a it's a monumental task. Uh, I mean, I've been in this space for quite some time, and I've talked with numerous groups about this sort of concept and idea. And up until that point in time, uh, there hadn't been anything. So I, I think it's fantastic that you all have moved in this space. It's been roughly nine months or so. How is it? How's it gone so far? Yeah, it's um, we. Yes, it's about nine months. Yes, it seems longer. <laughs> um, yes, no, it's, it's going it's going re really well, actually, um, better than we had ever thought it would. Um, so we we, we launched um, uh, back in 2022 uh, with 37, I think, founding members. And you know, we had some good companies who um, really were awesome and they provided the early support you know, before we knew how it was going to work out. We had Microsoft and Meta and NVIDIA, uh, my own company, and uh, Adobe and Autodesk and uh, W3C and Open Geospatial Consortium. So we had some um, some good founding members. But I honestly thought when we launched, you know, we will get a couple dozen more and then that'll be enough. We can start building it up from there. Um, but by the end of um, 2022, you know, we had broken through the 2,000 organization members. And wow. now we're approaching the 2,500 
Mark. Yeah, that's that's serious business. That's great. That's fantastic. Good for you all. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's interesting, and it, I think it does show that you know um, there there is a belief and a desire to base the metaverse on interoperability standards, and uh, and that uh, organizations and companies are willing to get involved to to make that happen. So, which is which is good to see. I think it's going to be to the benefit of everyone. May I ask, like, does this go beyond uh, the interoperability to? Um dare I say, social issues, issues of um, uh, codes around how children are going to be treated, treated in this space, like all those types of things, as well as primarily just the interoperability around the technology itself? Yeah, that's a great question. And you know, many of us, including myself and Kronos, you know, we, kind of, we do come from the technical API, you know, how do you connect you know, a, a program to a GPU? It's a very technical thing. But it, it, it's interesting the way it's worked out, though, the um the first thing we did because we realized you know we have the metaverse that no one can define and we have 24 2500 organizations all coming together many of which have never met before uh so that's a potential recipe for chaos <laughs> <laughs> i can only imagine yeah. seriously yes <laughs> yeah so so we were very deliberate in trying to put some structure on what should the forum actually do and you know, to, to our knowledge, if you know of someone who's done this before, please let us know because we'd love to learn from <laughs> wow. them. But now we're kind of learning how we go. We haven't had this uh, communication uh, venue before in quite this form, but so we are learning as we go. But the first thing we did was um, uh, poll the membership. What are your problems or what opportunities do you see where interoperability you know is missing, or if we had it, could make a difference? And we immediately got two hundred and fifty. Uh, different different uh, topics. They naturally bunched up into domains, and now we're creating working groups that are picking out the key uh, work items from those different domains. So that that by itself has been a very interesting process. The no, that that is amazing. Please go ahead. And the that is a very so we have a couple dozen d domains, and the, some of them are what you'd expect: three D asset interoperability, avatars. You know, how do you take avatars and assets around? The one that, and we hit enable upvoting, downvoting. The one that got upvoted right to the top, number one, was privacy, security, and um, uh, safety on uh, on the metaverse. And that speaks to, I think, you know, everyone is very sensitized. I think it's great that everyone is sensitized that you know, the metaverse needs to be a platform that people can trust, else people aren't going to use it. Because the you know, potential downside is, is higher than Web 2. Um, <laughs> So it's great that people are really um, paying uh, uh, attention. And to an finally answer your question, it, it means that we do need to be broader. Interoperability means more than just technical API standards. It does mean best practices, social norms, um, adv advocacy, um, uh, reaching out, you know, even l lobbying. I don't know, we, we wouldn't do, do that, but there are organizations out there that are you know, pushing for regulation to um the, to appropriately guide uh the the industry we want our mission at the forum is not to compete with any of the standards organizations or advocacy organizations it's to provide this venue uh where any organization that's trying to collaborate to to build the metaverse can execute their mission hopefully easier and and better through using the forum as a resource to communicate with the broader community so it it is broader than just technical api standards it, it's amazing to hear that um and I, I greatly appreciate what you're talking about here so you know what popped into my head was this concept or idea that here's the evolution of the internet right so from web 2 to web 3 the asset ownerships nfts potentially crypto right as a back end we mm -hmm. even though it's an evil word right now but eh, it'll it'll resurface and come back around at some point so you're talking about all this, you're talking about upvoting, the uh, groupings of organizations coming together, gathering. What about eventually this turning into a DAO? That's a very interesting question. And um it has it has come up several several times, you know, because we do uh we do have uh quite a strong participation from the web three uh community you know, and we're very happy to have a liaison with OMA three, for example, that's you know, very active in this space too. We want to help their mission uh, as well, just like you know, all the other organizations that are that, that are out there. If all my personal opinion, <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. I'd love that. Yes, and, and, you know, and we have you know we haven't decided one way or the other. I mean, at the moment, we're not using 
DAO um, uh, kind of structure. Um, I think that there there may well be parts of what we end up trying to do collaborative that, that, that could use DAO. So we're, not, we're certainly not dis discounting it, but I think there is a there there is also a danger for what we're trying to do. You know, the the essence of what we're trying to do is build consensus, and you know, our experience is you know you you need to socialize and you need to talk and you need to you know disagree in in, in a positive way and you know, and that that's you know the the collision of good ideas and the debate um, is really I think essential to building genuine consensus and I'm I'm not sure DAO the impersonal nature of a DAO um, is really conducive to that but you know I fully admit I'm an old Fuddy daddy. <laughs> <laughs> no. so, so you know, I may be missing the, I may be missing the plot. But the, um, I, I, I'm interested to use now to to make decision making more um, efficient. But we, we mustn't lose sight of that core, you know, the, the the social aspect of what we're trying to do. And I and I personally think that you have it absolutely right. Based on my own personal philosophy and vision on this and working with DAOs, I think initially when you're getting something off the ground that uh, is as uh, large in scope and, and, and complicated in many ways, but in a good way, and you're trying to wrap your arms around everything that you're trying to do in this space, um, to do that via a DAO initially is extraordinarily messy. So mm -hmm. once an organization, I'm not saying yours, but once an organization seems to have gotten to that point where people are in a good spot, you have standards set, interoperability, interoperability is generally set up in a good way, and it's moving in the right direction, then it seems like, okay, you could potentially implement a DAO to oversee and interact at that stage. But right in the beginning, it seems like that might be a heavy lift for everyone involved. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I love hearing you walk through that because it makes a lot of sense to me um, from this side. So maybe one or two other questions, and I'd love to hear if there's anything else that you would like to discuss. Um, to me, it, it's it's definitely somewhat critical, but I'd love to hear your vision on how important hardware is, is into this space. Clearly, coming from NVIDIA, you're gonna. <laughs> I know there might be a, a hat tip to that, but like even bigger and broader, like. Uh, Bellwether or organizations like Apple coming out with their VR headset in the next, let's say, six months, who knows, maybe 12 months. Um, how critical is that to mass adoption? And then people really even further leading into this conversation. Yeah. So if by hardware you mean um, you know, VR and AR hardware, um, I I, it, it's going to be an essential ingredient, but, I, but not necessarily even central to the metaverse i think the and again acknowledging that we don't know what the metaverse is going to be so you know who, who knows but the i think there there is a danger and in some of the press you definitely see the over association of the metaverse with a, a number of concepts actually a number of the, the, the media over associate the metaverse with xr you no know, um, you know, you often hear, you know, we're going to live in the metaverse and we're going to plug in and we're going to, it's kind of this dystopian, <laughs> 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 we're going to be in there for our lives and we're never going to come out. And, and and rightly, there's a lot, you know, uh, normal people backlash against that saying that doesn't sound very good. You know, you can't buy, you can't drink a cup of coffee in the virtual metaverse. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, there's no doubt that some of the most immersive experiences uh, for a bunch of different use cases um, is going to be delivered through virtual reality. There's no, no doubt. And augmented reality uh, will connect us to the real world. And you know, as the devices get more and more um, socially acceptable, you know, that will be a, a real trend. And potentially at, at some point, you know, maybe you could even replace mobile phones. So who, who knows? But but to say that the metaverse is just about XR, I think is really missing the point. Um, because if you look at the proto metaverse experiences right now, you know, again, going back Roblox, Fortnite, all the digital twins, you no know, running factories doing none, none of them use VR. <laughs> True. No, very good point. <laughs> and they're, all, browser they're, all, they're all using you no know, flat screens, you no know, yeah. phones, tablets, uh, PCs. Um, so VR, VR is going to be really important, but it's not the, it's not the central foundation and, and, um, no, there, there are other things too. I mean, Web three is is going to be central. Now, the the concept of decentralized trust storage transactions in some form is, I think, going, going to be essential. But no, NFTs um, is not central at all. And again, you see a lot of over association. A lot of people say, "Oh, metaverse." That's kind of 
that's going to be you know the wild west because it's just nfts i think it's you know it's over associating with a particular uh technology um can i can i follow up on that that's that's actually was going to be my la one of my last questions was around nfts and thinking about asset ownership in general <laughs> nfts are over generalized with the the monkey pictures or the the crypto punks or things of that nature but if you really start to start to expand it out it's it's basically a token that says someone owns something yes. and then what you can do with that token potentially lend or uh or fractionalize or whatever the case is if we're talking about a metaverse that we we both I think agree on, we don't know it's nebulous at this stage. We know what we're dealing with now, and some people are using browsers, some people are using PCs, um, um, Sony Playstations, all those types of things, and it's going to expand out to the headsets. And but what I think people will start to do, and this is my personal opinion, that I'd love to hear your your uh, thoughts on it, is once we spend more and more time in this space, having ownership or being able to to cling on to something that says, this is mine now. I mean, I have my physical home. I have this. I'm living in this more and more potentially. I know this sort of buys into what you just said is, is a little bit too much in the media. But doesn't that push the narrative that asset ownership or having control over your assets, especially in the decentralized world, is kind of a critical component, a building block of this? Oh, yes. Yeah, no, no, totally. I, I think the... Uh, 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 yes, I agree. The, the decentralization of um, asset ownership, of reputation, of um, you know, your, your history, transaction history, what you own, what you don't, uh, is absolutely going to be essential. We, we can't, you know, for, for, for most people's vision of the metaverse to, you know, to come to fruition, you know, we can't have all of that stuff stored on a single company's servers. You know, for a whole bunch of different reasons, right? It, it does. Um, it, it it's not not a path forward that is really viable. So, so yes, the whole concept of decentralization absolutely, I think, will will will, will be key. Um, I, I think that you know, and, and we will need the Web three community to figure to figure it out absolutely. Um, but you know, c compared to you know, virtual reality and three D graphics and even you know machine learning and AI, you know, Web three is a relatively young technology area and you know we've, we've seen the roller coaster over the last year or two you know there, there are going to be some dead ends there's going to be some confusion whilst we figure it figure it out uh i'm confident that the you know, the web3 community will figure it out you know, and to deliver this foundational piece that we need um but i i yeah i i, I wouldn't pick pick a particular chain <laughs> <laughs> i was it's gonna too, say is it ethereum's the solana is it avalanche there's millions of them uh um, yeah, it, it's too early but 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 it's a good process i mean we we need and actually you no know, again this is no kind of principle my, my, actually it's my number one rule of standardization is don't do r d by standards committee you know, huh. it's a death by a thousand cuts don't do that <laughs> <laughs> because whilst people are still trying to figure out what to do it's too soon to try to get everyone to agree on one way of doing something. You know, the right time to have standardization is when really the problem is solved. You know, we've gone through the Darwinian phase. We've had companies competing, you know, some winning, some some failing. That's the Darwinian way. And but and it's become clear. You no, know, we need to do um something in in a particular way. Uh, let me just stop and stop my video again. Uh, when we need to do something in a in a um, particular way has become clear, but everyone is kind of doing that thing, but doing it in annoyingly di different yeah. details around the edges, and everyone's really just getting frustrated. Saying it would be really great if you could just have you know a single way to do this, and everyone would do it the same way. We could all make more money. Uh, <laughs> that's the right time for standardization, and I, I don't think Web three is quite there yet. And yeah, and but. Again, we hope the forum can help, um, you know, add to the good discussions that are already ongoing by providing this wider forum and wider visibility for what the Web3 community is trying to do. You know, we, we hope we can, in some small way, help that discussion move faster. Fantastic. I have one last question, but before I do that, I would love to hear, is there anything else you'd like to share about the forum? Well... It's open to everyone, and uh, we have just incorporated because uh, the you know, we were bootstrapped by the Kronos Group. The Kronos Group funded the first uh, you know, year or so of the forum's operation to get things off the ground, and we um, we wanted to do that 
uh, because we wanted to see whether there was any industry interest before we built something more formal and legal, um, a legal entity. Uh, but of course, no. Now, now we have figured out that there is some interest uh, with the unanimous agreement of the membership. We have incorporated, um, so uh, we are now a standalone non-profit uh, industry consortium. We are now um, wanting to be independent, so we are going to be charging participation fees for a certain level uh, of sure. the, the companies that want to get involved in the management. Um, uh, we're charging modest fees, uh, but but um, participation in the domain groups is still uh, free and open to uh, to anyone who wants uh, to join. But we are open to everyone. The mission is unchanged. We're not a standards organization. Uh, we're this communication layer on top of all the standards activities that are out there. We just encourage uh, anyone who's interested to to come join us. You know, everyone is is very welcome, and we need the participation of the industry to know what the industry needs us to help. Uh, the standards organizations build so well goodness thank you so much that was a fantastic overview and i really appreciate the background and it's something that's very important based on all my conversations with various organizations across uh, different industries it's it's absolutely needed all right so my final question and it came about during your description of of the beginnings of what you worked on uh, earlier in your career and your uh, interest in imagery and pictures and the 3D imagery. So I have to ask, given what's changed within since, oh, I'd say, April of last year when I first started using Dolly mm -hmm. uh, or Dolly too, so generative art, uh, have you had a chance to, to play around with any of that? And what are your impressions initially? Yeah, I have. I have played around, you know, uh, both with the image generation and, you know, the large language models uh, to it. It's it's fascinating. Uh, it's kind of interesting how fast it's moving. You know, everyone seems to be surprised, <laughs> <laughs> including the people building them. <laughs> I, I definitely feels um, that way. Yeah. So um, for 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 the, for the metaverse, I, I think machine learning and artificial intelligence is probably the most important technology, actually, because it's going to enable so many things that just six months ago seemed like magic. You know, natural user interfaces, you know, being able to interact uh, in the metaverse with uh, natural uh, language interfaces, you know, um, gestures without needing controllers, you know, all kinds of user interface um, are going to become much more seamless and easy to use, which is one essential uh, thing. The 3D community, for many for many years has been going after this holy grail of enabling normal end users, you know, I like to say my mom, uh, <laughs> to, to capture and generate 3D content. Now, my mom sends me pictures and, and videos, right, of the family, whatever is going on. She's never been enabled to um, you know, capture a 3D model of a birthday cake, right? Uh, and and send that. Why not? Because it's really tricky. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's really difficult. It's really difficult to do. But no, AI, I think, is going to unlock um, consumer generation of three D content. User generated content is going to be essential to the metaverse because if it does become this large networked, um, unsiloed uh, platform, there's not enough three D designers in the world to fill the world with interesting content. It's going to have to be generated by the end users themselves. And I think machine learning and AI is going to be absolutely essential uh, to making that come true. So, you know, that, that is you know, definitely one one aspect of bringing all of these different technologies uh, together that's going to really create some interesting opportunities. No, I, I totally agree. My goodness. Uh, my last comment is that I just came out of a, a conference at MIT yesterday, the day before, actually, three-day conference. And... Um, I was blown away by this. You may have seen it in the news. I, I wrote about it because I was like, this just is is, is mind blowing. Um, so Jeff Hinton, who is sort of mm -hmm. the, you know, the godfather of all AI, has now since uh, resigned from Google. Yes. But during the conference in, in this room, filled with all these scientists and, and heads of businesses, he basically said that uh, we are very close to the end of humanity. Mm -hmm. And that uh, essentially all of humanity is just a passing phase for intelligence, right? Which is crazy to think about. That's further off and uh, not. It's just it was wild to hear someone of that magnitude talking about that. But uh, 
<laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Particularly the person that's you know, helped invent it. So I know. It, it is it is sobering. And, it is. Um, it is. It's actually been um, you know, my, my personal journey within the forum. I've had the honor uh, and the pleasure to actually meet with many of the folks that have the same concerns. I mean, a lot of the organizations in, in the forum are to do with safety and security, you know, uh, in the in the classic sense, and looking forward to you know, what is artificial, artificial intelligence going to do, what, what are the dangers. There are folks out there, of course, that have been thinking about this for decades uh, or, or already, and it's, I think it's a healthy thing that it's bubbling to the top. You know, I, it's interesting. I mean, large language models are just pattern matching. So I've, I've, I've been on the side, well, you know, it's not really intelligence. It's just pattern matching. There's nothing to yes. worry about. But, you know, uh, Hinton's point that as soon as you let the pattern matching build new code, then you really maybe have unlocked something <laughs> that you can't, you can't control. But, yeah, it's good oh, that we're goodness. thinking about it. It is. Neil. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I think it's a, a fantastic and very important perspective. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. It's good to meet you. All right. Take care.